we will not be able to achieve um, long-term export goals without our metropolitan areas. What metropolitan areas do is they are proactive in bringing firms into the export pipeline. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, this goes back to the fact that we have only 1% of companies that have been exporting. That number has not been able to budge. And that is because right now in order to export, it's voluntary. It's whenever you are enlightened. It assumes, the system assumes that you are ready and interested in exporting. But the vast majority of companies do, are not aware of global opportunities. They think that the domestic market is enough. You need local regional leaders who work with companies every day to prioritize and target which firms are most likely and educate them um, and get them ready for export, um, get them export ready. And only then can we increase the base or the number of companies who are exporting, which is critical to ensure long-term job growth. So first is metropolitan area leaders have direct relationships with firms. They work with companies on a regular basis. And so they can prioritize limited resources on which firms um, can be export ready, um, therefore increasing the pipeline of businesses uh, who are ready to uh, uh, pursue international sales. Um, second is that um, metropolitan areas are well positioned to integrate the dizzying array of state and federal export services in a way that is more efficient and clear for firms so that they are more confident that exporting is a good investment for them. And lastly, uh, in order for us to export well, exports need to be done in a, in a broader context. Regional leaders are inherently better positioned to integrate manufacturing innovation, freight and infra infrastructure modernization, skills training, uh, immigrant outreach in a way that ensures that uh, we are setting the foundation and platform for greater global engagement and therefore export success. Brookings is currently working in four metropolitan areas in helping them adopt metropolitan export initiatives. Um, greater Portland region, the Minneapolis-St. Paul region, the Los Angeles area, and the Syracuse Central New York region. In each of these markets what we're finding is that a diverse group of leaders are really critical to making sure we have export success. That includes um, government, business intermediaries, uh, regional economic development groups, the private sector, and the universities who often bring the talent and skills and the market research needed to support firms as they enter the global marketplace. Furthermore, we need to engage the ports, the airport authority, and uh, the, the folks in the uh, logistics and supply chain network to ensure that they too are critical partners to this. Finally, uh, for regional export success to be real, we need state and federal partners. So all of these leaders have been working in close collaboration over the last nine months to ensure we have an export strategy that is going to be a true success. For instance, in Portland, um, they have two unique strengths. One is the fact that they have a large share of manufacturers uh, larger than the that are exporting, larger than the national average. One of their strategies is to help small, more small and mid-sized manufacturers break into new markets. Second asset is they build green cities. Portland is known for their sustainable goods and services, whether it's in electronic vehicle technology, electric vehicle technology, in uh, energy efficient building technologies and design and architecture and planning they are positioning those goods and services for a rapidly urbanizing world. Syracuse Central New York, on the other hand, has a lot of companies who have never exported, small and mid-sized companies who have mostly been dependent on a domestic market. They're going to help their small and mid-sized manufacturers start slow by breaking into the Canadian market, which is literally across the border from their community. And so they, to help them, become more globally engaged.